Hey guys, it's Misa from Japanese Amo. This is the second lesson for learning kanji. I hope you reviewed the kanji we learned last time. This time we'll start off with the kanji for tree. Again, this kanji was created out of the shape of a tree. The kunyomi or the Japanese reading is ki. The onyomi is moku. So as the noun tree, you use ki. So sakura tree in Japanese would be Sakura no ki, sakura no ki. Now let's try reading this sentence. Do you still remember the reading and the meaning of the second kanji from the first video? It looks like a man spreading his arms, right? And it means big. So this sentence means that tree is big, isn't it? Now, how do you say tree? Ki. Right? So altogether it is Ano kiwa o ki desu ne. Ano kiwa o ki desu ne. Next, this one. A kanji and then it says yobi. Remember, yobi is the suffix for the days of the week, right? Though we haven't learned the kanji for yobi yet, we will learn how to write it in this video. So this would be a compound now. The first kanji means fire, and fire plus this yobi makes Tuesday. Do you remember how we say Tuesday? It's kayobi. Kayobi. We use the onyomi for the kanji, fire. So we should do the same for the second kanji. Tree plus yobi makes Thursday. Literally, ut day. But again, it comes from the word mokusei, Jupiter. So we say mokuyobi for Thursday. Altogether it says kayobi to mokuyobi wa isogashi desu. Tuesday and Thursday are busy or I'm busy on Tuesday and Thursday. Kayobi to mokuyobi wa isogashi desu. By the way, if we add another two trees, we get the kanji for forest. Pretty interesting, huh? The reading is Mori, mori. Next, if we combine the kanji for person and tree, we get the kanji for to rest. Just imagine a person resting against the tree. The kunyomi is yasu. With the okurigana mu, it is a verb to rest. Yasu mu. The onyomi is kyu, used in the compound word. And depending on what okurigana you put, the meaning can change a little. Yasumu means to rest or to take a day off. Yasumi means day off, holiday, and break. All verbs have u sound at the end, so you know which one is the verb and which one is the noun. If you say hiru yasumi, it means lunch break. It is a compound noun but has hiragana in it, so you still use the kunyomi. Okay, let's try reading this one. It's Shigoto o yasumu. Shigoto o yasumu. It means to take a day off from work. Basically, it means to not go to work. So we put the word shigoto, work or job, but you can put, for example, school, gakko, and it would mean not go to school, like when you have a cold. Okay, next. Shumatsu means weekend. So all together. Shumatsu wa yasumi desu, which means weekends are days off. Next, if we add a vertical line to the kanji tree, we get the kanji for book or origin and true. This one is a strange one because when we hear onyomi or the Chinese readings, most of the time we don't know what kanji or word you're talking about without looking at the kanji. But for this kanji, the onyomi hon we immediately associate it with the meaning of book. So hon doesn't have to be in the compound word to mean book. Because of the reason, a lot of Japanese people also think that hon is the kunyomi, but it's not. An easy way to figure out if it's on or kun is that most of the time when the reading has n at the end, it is an onyomi. Anyway, there is a kunyomi for this kanji, but it is rarely used, so we're gonna skip it. Just remember this as hon. 
So let's try reading this sentence. It means this is a book. So we read it like これは本です Next one is a compound word, very important one, so you should remember. It means really. We hadn't had the second kanji that looks like the katakana yo with eyelashes. The onyomi for this kanji is to, and it usually means right as in right or wrong. So together it's honto really. If you change the intonation like honto, it's a question. Really? Honto? You don't have to put the ni, but you'll hear both ways honto or honto ni as really. Next, do you still remember the kanji for the rest? We are gonna put the kanji for book instead of tree. And we get the kanji for body. Just imagine resting your body under the tree with a dumbbell on the side. And the reading is karada, karada. I'll show you some expressions that use karada. First, karada ni i. The ni particle means to or towards and i means good. Karada ni i means good for you or good for your health. You can use it about healthy food. So for example, Yasai wa karada ni i means vegetables are good for you. And if you want to say bad for you, then put the word bad which is warui instead of i. So for example, we can say Mac wa karada ni warui. Which means McDonald's isn't good for you. Mac is how we say McDonald's for short, by the way. Next, we have a kanji for mouth. It's one of the easiest kanji as you just need to draw a box. The kunyomi is kuchi. There is an onyomi, but it's not common enough, so I'll skip for now. And do you remember what the katakana ro looks like? It looks basically the same. Because of this reason, when I was a child and saw this package, I didn't think that the second character was the kanji mouth, but the katakana ro. It was especially confusing because choko is written in katakana, and also I didn't think the first character was the kanji for one, but thought it was the sign that makes a long vowel, like kado, card. We put the line. But it's impossible to read the long line at the beginning, so I was trying to read like ro choko or something. <laughs> Then I asked my grandpa if I was right and this package was misprinted or something. He told me it's supposed to be read as hitokuchi choko, which means bite sized chocolate. The kanji for hitokuchi literally means one mouth, but it means one bite or one bite size. The reason why we don't use onyomi for this compound word is that Japanese has crazy counting systems that have no rules. Not just learners, but native speakers also cannot always figure out how to read words that include numbers and counters. So you basically just need to memorize each counter. Next, I'll show you an interesting expression that uses kuchi. Can you try reading it? The mouth isn't used as a compound word, so you should use the kunyomi. Ga is the particle that indicates the subject. Karui means light, as in lightweight. Can you guess what it means? It means loose tongue. It describes someone who never keeps others' secrets. Next, this is a compound noun, so both kanjis have onyomi in it. Do you remember the onyomi for person? It's jin. And though I didn't tell you the onyomi for mouth, it's ko. So together, it's jinko. It means population. The kanji for mouth used to be used as a counter for people as the mouth represented how many people needed to be fed. And then it turned to the meaning of population. Next, from the kanji mouth, we can get the kanji for what, which is very important to know. Adding the kanji for person on the left and something that looks like T on the right side. Maybe imagine a man's face whose mouth is wide open and beard is a bit messy. Okay, now let's try using this nani in sentences. Can you try? Kore wa nani? It means what is this? This is an informal way. You can even omit the wa particle and say, Kore nani? Formally, you'd have to put this ka at the end. And the one thing I want you to be careful about is that with this desu ka, The kanji has to be read as nan no nani. 
So all together, it's これは何ですか Remember, you cannot say 何ですか Just 何ですかこれは何ですか Next, this is also a tricky one. These are the kanji for what and person, right? It can mean two things depending on the reading. First, if you read this as 何人 then it means what nationality? 何人 And if you read this as 何人 then it means how many people. So, how do you know when to read which? You just need to guess from the context. For example, take a look at this sentence. ミサは blah blah ですか And the answer says, ミサは日本人です Then it's weird to translate this question as how many people is Misa? So we translate it as what nationality is Misa? Then, Jin is the suffix for nationality. So we read it as 何人 Misa は何人ですか Misa は日本人です Next, when we add a vertical line in the middle, we get the kanji for they. Or sometimes sun, but only in compound words like sunburn or sunlight. It kind of looks like a calendar, don't you think? The kun yomi is surprisingly short, it's just hi, hi. So as the word day, we say hi. But because of the crazy Japanese rules for counting stuff, once you start learning how to count days, you might get headache. So for now, let's skip that and focus on actually useful stuff. Can you try reading these? The first one means this day, and the second one means Mother's Day. They are not compound words, so they should be read like この日 and 母の日 respectively. Next, this one can be a useful phrase. 大変な means tough. Hard, as in hard time or rough. It says 大変な日だった which means I had a rough day. 大変な日だった This is informal, so if you want to make this formal, you just change the だった into でした大変な日でした Next, do you remember this first kanji? Person leaning against a tree. It means to rest, right? So with the okurigana, it's yasumi. Yasumi on its own can mean day off, but to be more accurate, we sometimes say yasumi no hi. Of course, you don't need to write the brackets like I did. But one underneath is a compound now, and it means holiday in the sense of national holiday like Christmas and so on. So using the onyomi, it is kyujitsu. Remember, kyujitsu is a holiday, but yasumi no hi is more like a day off. Next, this compound noun is probably the most important word when learning Japanese. Yes, it means Japan. So maybe some of you might be thinking, what are they and book to do with Japan? Apparently, Japanese people read the most amount of books every day in the world. Just kidding. The kanji for day can also represent sun, and the kanji for book can also represent origin. So basically, it means the origin of the sun, like where the sun rises, because we are in the east, right? Anyway, we read it like Nihon, Nihon. So next one should be easy to read. Can you read it? It means Japanese person, so Nihonjin, Nihonjin. So you should be able to read this sentence now. Misa is Japanese. Misa wa Nihonjin desu. Next one is also a compound word. Do you remember we had kanjis for Tuesday and Thursday? Finally, we are gonna learn the kanji for the suffix yobi. Here is a tip for learning kanji. If your goal is to recognize kanji, not to write them, you don't need to try to memorize the whole parts of the kanji. Just remember the main things that stick out. Like for this kanji, you can just memorize the left part, day, 
and the top part that looks like two katakana yo. Just ignore the bottom one. There is no other kanji that has those elements together. Anyway, now that we know how to read the suffix bit, the first kanji for day or san will be read as nichi, nichi. So the word for Sunday is nichi yobi. It's annoying because the, the first kanji and the last kanji are both day. The reading is different. Nichi yobi. Okay, let's review how to read Tuesday, Thursday, as well as Sunday now. Do you remember the first kanji? It means fire, right? Like man on fire. The onyami for this is ka. So Tuesday is kayobi. Next one, the kanji for tree. The onyami is moku. So mokuyobi means Thursday. And the one we just learnt, Sunday is nichiyobi. Next one is a new kanji. Remember that the kanji for mouth, kuchi, looks like the katakana ro. This one has the katakana ra inside. The meaning is now. The kunyomi is ima. The onyomi is kon. Don't you think this kanji looks like a lid on top of a ramen cup? You see, the bit that looks like the katakana ra is the ramen bit. When making ramen, you need to wait for 3 minutes, right? That three minutes feels so long that you always think, is it now? Is it now? Impatiently. I really used to ask my mom impatiently, ima, ima, while waiting for ramen to be ready. Good, let's try reading this sentence. This one also is a very useful phrase to remember. The two kanjis are next to each other, but they are not a compound word. Do you still remember what the second kanji means? There is a small mouth wide open, looks like a man saying, what, if we add eyes on top. Anyway, what is nani, right? Nani. So altogether, the sentence is, ima nani shiteru? Ima nani shiteru? And it means, what are you doing now? Or rather, what are you up to now? Friends often text each other asking this question. This is a colloquial form and actually the O particle and I between te and ru are omitted. In informal speech, we almost always omit the O particle and shiteiru, which means doing, becomes shiteiru without the I. Ima nani shiteiru? If you want to say this formally, you can say Ima nani o shiteimasu ka? Ima nani o shiteimasu ka? Next one is a compound word with a weird reading. Perhaps you can guess the meaning. The kanji for now and they make today. We read it like kyo, kyo. This one actually can be read as konnichi, which makes more sense with normal onyomis, but it's rarely used, maybe only in a very formal situation. Do you remember hello is konnichiwa, right? This konnichiwa indeed comes from this word today, plus the wa particle, which means like, speaking of today, but as a phrase hello, you should write it in hiragana only. Anyway, for the word for today, we normally say, kyo, kyo. So let's try reading this sentence. It says, today I'll read a book. So, kyo wa. 本を読みます。今日は本を読みます。Finally, let's review the kanji we had today. There were a lot of them. I'll give you some time to think and then I'll say the meaning first for each kanji. Tree Rest Book Body Mouth What Day Now Now how to read them once again I'll give you some time to think I'll say kunyomi first and then onyomi Ki and Moku 
Yasu or Yasumu with the Okuriganamu and Q Yasu and Q Hon Karada Kuchi and Ko Nani or Nan Hi and Nichi Ima and Kon Before we finish, let's do some reviewing. Can you try? It means Thursday is my day off. So, Mokuyobi wa yasumi desu. Mokuyobi wa yasumi desu. Next, it's a bit long, but you can do it. It means what do Japanese people do on holidays or days off? So, Nihon jin wa kyujitsu ni nani o shimasu ka? Nihon jin wa kyujitsu ni nani o shimasu ka? Next, it has two kanjis from the previous videos. Do you still remember? The meaning is dog's mouths are big. So, Inu no kuchi wa okii desu. Inu no kuchi wa okii desu. Next, just one kanji, but this is quite useful to remember. It's Ima wa chotto isogashii desu. It means I'm a little busy at the moment, or now. Chotto is always written in hiragana and means a little bit. And isogashi means busy. Ima wa chotto isogashi desu. Last one. There are three same kanji that means day, but each reading is different. It's difficult, but do you remember? The first part means today and the second three kanjis make Sunday. Kyo wa nichi yobi desu. Today is Sunday. Kyo wa nichi yobi desu. Phew! We learned a lot this time. Make sure to rewatch it a few times to get them right. Again, if you made it to the end, please leave a comment. I was so happy to see your great comments on the last video. Thank you so much. Your support means a lot to me. Ja, mata ne. See you later.